David Rosenberg from Aero Farms. Welcome to the Ag of Oak studio. Great to have you and a wonderful presentation. What message would you hope that people will take out of what you said today? Embrace innovation. So th this is an industry where there's a lot of inefficiencies and there's a lot of opportunities. And if we think differently, we could solve problems faster. If we think collaboratively, we could go even faster yet. What is vertical farming? Just paint us a little bit of a picture about what it is you're doing in this really quite innovative area of, of agriculture. Vertical farming, we define it at Aero Farms as layer upon layer of farming, ultimately to grow a lot of crops in a very small footprint. Enabled by LEDs, light emitting diodes, there's no sun, no soil, but it's really like the no sun that's the important part where the crops could be within a, like every, probably around this distance, depending on the crops, you could put another level. So in the ceiling heights here, you could have 14 different levels of growing and again, grow a lot of crops in a small footprint. So it enables local food production at scale. The scale is important because at the end of the day, if we want to compete with the economics of the field farmers or have a solution that people could afford, one needs scale and that enables also the automation. Automation, you could have it, but you don't want automation if you're only utilizing the automation an hour a day. So one wants enough scale growing to fully utilize the automation. The efficiencies must be tremendous. What there, sort of numbers are, do you get? So, I mean, all across the board from germination to growing to harvesting. So that operational efficiency, as well as when it's sold that people actually eat it because it's in the supermarket within 24 hours as opposed to five days or so. So a crop that is a very short shelf life is there for the customer to enjoy before it spoils. You use less inputs though in the process? Correct. So the, across the board from seeds to nutrients to water, there's less inputs. On an actual level on the farm, there's more energy. But when you look at the whole value chain of energy that's used to ship water, produce fertilizers and so forth, I think it's net net less. But that math and that full calculus of the field farmer, where the information is very hard to come by, isn't in a tight package. But net net of all the inputs, there's doing more with less. What can you grow in this sort of environment? I mean, it wouldn't be suited to all crops, of course, but what sort of things can you produce in such an efficient way? Well, we're not going to grow an oak tree in a vertical farm, but I actually think we could grow anything. It doesn't mean we grow everything. So we look to see where there are problems to solve and where are we best suited to solve those problems. So part of that has to do with the size of the plant, the crop turn, the growth cycle. It also looks at where there is that crop isn't grown effectively locally. Also, is there a benefit to pesticide free? Is there a benefit if we grow a plant with a certain quality that the customer might like? Just, sorry, not just turn that a little bit more. Just make sure. You're also turning the traditional farming model on its head in other ways too because you're growing things in urban areas as opposed to out in the, the countryside where you would normally expect farming to be done. Right. So at its core, we disintermediate the supply chain. We grow plants in cities as opposed to fields, enabling that local food production at scale. It, it impacts processing. So a lot of farmers, the term farm out your work comes from the farming industry where they might not be farmers themselves, they farm out the work and at the end of the day they're marketing sales processing. So we want to partner either do the processing and have a lot of farming to do the processing or partnering with other processors where we could have the economies of scale and utilize the same equipment. We look to partner with people within that value chain on the processing and distribution and retailing side. And on the ag tech side, we need seeds, we need nutrients, we need to innovate on the biologicals just like other farmers. There must be real marketing advantages too, being right where your market is. There are. One of the hottest trends in retailing is local food production. 
and it's hard to source locally in a lot of parts of the world because of seasonality. So maybe there's only available product three months, four months of the year. At Aero Farms, we could grow whether it's the equator or the North Pole 365 days a year. We just have to make the adjustments environmentally to give the plants the specification that they want. What is the impact socially of growing things like this in an urban environment? Is there, is there an impact? There are several impacts. At its basic level, we're creating jobs in cities. There's trends in urbanization, so this is where people often need this, the jobs. We're also building these farms in lower social economic demographics where often, at least in the U.S., there are what's called food deserts and people don't have access to fresh food. So we open up our doors, give people access to our farm. While it's an unconventional farm, they have access to fresh food. The biggest impact is probably inspiration, where people see the innovation happening in their backyard and they are excited by it and it inspires other innovators and other people to reach for the stars. What about the kids? Because in Australia, for instance, a lot of them don't know where milk comes from and other products that they buy in the supermarket, they have no connection with that, no concept of how it's produced. Growing in an urban environment, what's your experience with making that connection? We, I'll tell you a story. We have people that work at Aero Farms who their, their kids didn't have access to a farm, didn't eat their greens, if you will, to get a strong and healthy uh, group in the food category. And we put a farm in the school so kids run by the sixth graders. They seed, grow, harvest. It gives them that constant interaction. And the kids, it's, uh, it kind of hits this curiosity point where they're engaged with this product and consequently started eating food that they wouldn't otherwise have eaten. They ate their greens and ultimately started choosing their greens over their fries. How satisfying is that for you as effectively an urban farmer? Yeah, tremendously satisfying. That's not just impacting shareholders, but that gets to that social benefit that inspires people at Aero Farms and a lot of people that want to join our journey. And what you do, I presume, really relies on data and data management and constant finessing of the system that you, you have produced. It, it does. We view ourselves as a data analytics company as much as anything else. So there are thousands of sensors in the farm. How do we take information, use it to not only digitally manage the farm, but learn and be better farmers in the future? What are your plans for the future? Are you looking at further expansion, farms in other urban areas? I'm here in Australia because we're talking to different people about partnering in this market. I think it would be a tremendous market to expand to. So we're expanding geographically as well as growing more crops and growing them better. In Australia, some of the challenges are not, not just finding the right partner that could write checks. These are big, expensive farms. But also there's a marketing element in our economic model. For us to make money here, we'd have to sell crops at about a 20% premium over where the market is today. And today there isn't really a premium organic category that sells well. So it, it needs to, we need a partner that believes that the customer would appreciate whether it's better taste, pesticide free, and we're looking for that partner to enter the market with. How, um, oh, what was the question I was gonna ask you? Um, how did you actually get into this area of interest, David? I mean, it's, it's, it's a fascinating thing that you are doing. What inspired you? What was the catalyst? Well, one of my mentors, Bill McDonough, who wrote this book, Cradle to Cradle, that talks about how do we do more with less environmentally, he inspired me to build a company that has a big environmental impact and he thought the trend of local food production is gonna grow. And then reading Heights's law that talks about the efficiency of a diode improving by 50% every three years, I realized this could really catalyze the industry and push the industry from an economic standpoint. What would you hope to leave as a legacy? I, I note that you're here with your son and he must be very proud of his dad and what you're doing. What do you hope to leave as a legacy with this remarkable business you're involved with? I think what Aero Farms could represent is innovation in an industry and how to go fast, how people from a lot of different experience sets 
different industries could come in with people in the ag industry and really solve some of the problems and innovate faster. So uh, I think this is a wonderful time in ag. There's a lot of technologies that could catalyze new business models and people are acting with urgency. I hope people act with more urgency, more collaboration to solve these big problems ahead. David Rosenberg, thanks for joining us in the Evoke Ag Studio. Thank you.